Welcome to today's Voucher Recovery Webinar, hosted by Prosper Show, the Amazon Marketplace's most trusted source for education and solutions for established Amazon sellers. Voucher Recovery is a sponsored webinar series to support our Amazon seller community by enhancing their company's resilience during COVID-19. We're glad that you've taken the time to join us today. My name is Brian Anderson. I am a content producer for Emerald's Prosper Show. I will be your host and moderator for today's webinar, COVID-19 and Q4, prepare your e-marketplace business for holiday demand. Before we begin, let me take a moment to explain how this webinar works. The audio for this event is broadcast over the internet. Make sure your computer or device's audio is available, unmuted, and the volume is turned up to an acceptable level. If you're having trouble with re receiving the audio, please select the question mark in the upper corner of the global meet interface and select test my system now. This will give you information on your connection and how you can remedy any problems you may be having. Also, simply disconnecting and rejoining the event will allow you to catch a better stream of the audio if you're still experiencing problems. You'll be on mute for the duration of this call. However, you may ask questions. If you would like to ask a question, type it into the box labeled ask a question on the left side of your screen. Your questions will be queued up and I will present as many of them as I am able to to the presenters at the end of this presentation. Questions related to technical issues can also be answered here and will be answered by our webcast producers. I uh, want to let everybody know also that a recording of this session will be available after the event and we will send you a link via email so you can review the content or share it with your colleagues for on-demand viewing. It is now my pleasure to introduce our presenters. Andrew Alterson is the general manager of enterprise brands at Feedvisor, an AI driven platform and managed service that optimizes Amazon marketplace experience for major brands from Amazon advertising and pricing to serve to content and merchandising. Previously, Andrew was the CEO of Adfin, uh, the North American president of uh, President of Harvest Digital and held prior leadership roles at Digital Creative and media agencies, including Publix, Ogilvy, and Digitas. Andrew holds a Bachelor of Science in Economics from the Wharton School at the University of Pennsylvania and an MBA from the University of Michigan. As the Advisors Vice President of Sales, our Second presenter, Brian Liebman, is a merchandising and e-commerce expert with a proven track record of driving revenue in high-growth environments. Throughout his career, he has shown an affinity for growth and adaptation, leading retail teams and at Amify, PBS, Purchasing Power, and Living Social. Uh, it's my pleasure to hand this over to our presenters, Andrew, Brian. Awesome. Well, thanks, Brian. Appreciate you guys having us. Andrew and I are Super excited to be here and to be uh, working with everybody today. We have three main goals. One, I mean, it's a wild and crazy world that they're specifically related to retail. We want to kind of go over how it's changed and how it's going to impact us going forward, specifically related to holiday and Q4. So Q4 is going to be big. I mean, Q4 is always big, but this year it's going to be bigger than ever. And we're going to go over some of the macro and micro reasons why and put everybody hopefully in a good position to be successful on um, the back half of this year. And lastly, as Steve Weiser, our goal is really to support brands and sellers in the e-commerce marketplaces. Again, we want to make sure that we're providing everything that we know to help everybody. So throughout this presentation, feel free to ask questions. Feel free to contact Andrew and I afterwards. Our information will be provided later. And also towards the end of this presentation, we'll have um, a, a way for us to engage later um, for, to ensure everybody's going to be uh, super successful. Uh, Andrew, anything else you wanted to add to that? Uh, no, just happy to be here. Hope everyone can hear us. Uh, and uh, let's just jump in since time's short. Awesome. Well, I know everybody has been hearing this term, the new normal, but essentially retail has sort of been upended. You know, we've gone through what we deem as a black swan event. Can't be predicted. It was rare, widespread impact. Nobody saw it coming. But I think it's important for us to understand some of those implications and how we could use those and how we could rebuild our playbooks going forward. You know, again, we can't anticipate what, what is going to happen, but we absolutely need to make sure we're learning from those and everything we do going forward. Second, 
e-commerce more so than ever is really taking a center stage. Retail has been upended. We're going to kind of go through retail reinvention and how it's going to impact us through Q4 and holiday specifically a little bit later. But it's really important to know that e-commerce not only was on the hockey stick curve to thrive, but now more than ever it's going to. I was just reading an article by Goldman Sachs the other day. They anticipate e-commerce through the end of this year going from 14% to 19%. Um, o- o- overall penetration, and we as advice to believe it's going to be actually a lot larger. That closer to that 22 to 25 percent from everything that we've seen so far this year. Again, brick and mortar is going through a painful reinvention, and it's really incumbent upon us as e-commerce leaders uh, or, or, or you know brands and sellers that have an omni-channel presence to ensure that we're putting ourselves and our customers in the best position to be successful. Amazon, Walmart, e-marketplaces really are leading the way. Of the 100 e-marketplaces out there, they represent more than 50% of total e-commerce, which is a staggering number. Amazon and Walmart are absolutely leading the way. They're growing in market share. And quite frankly, that's where consumers are, and that's where we need to be. Um, And lastly, and Andrew's going to kind of go over this in really good detail, you know, we're resetting expectations and forecasts based on all of this, the the, uh, new growth curve and everything that we've learned. The advisor sits on over 12, you know, 12 terabytes of data. We're a big data company. We're a machine learning company. We're a company that is really is rooted in algorithms. And we utilize this to make sure that we understand the curves and trends and can consistently implement those in the best interest of not only the e-commerce community, but our customers in general. Um, so, again, I'll, um, I'll, I'll turn it over, over to Andrew now. Again, we've seen a huge change in what's happened, and we have some real data to back that up. Great. So let's let's talk real data. As as Brian said, we sit on a lot of information at the advisor, working with hundreds of sellers, uh, looking at uh, you know uh, millions of SKUs and ASINs. Um, and so when we look at that, we can get a really good picture of what has happened, um, what is happening, and really, as more importantly, or most importantly, what what we believe is going to happen. Uh, so looking at this chart. Um, you can see left to right, obviously, kind of looking pre-COVID all the way to post-COVID. And you see that huge bump there where in March, um, this all hit us out of the blue, right, this black swan event. And, um, you know, grocery is the, re- is the line at the top. No surprise, it kind of came out of nowhere being kind of almost an afterthought in the e-commerce world, um, growing very slowly and shot up almost 90% um, in that one month. Um, so this massive spike in sales, but you see it across almost all categories, especially the essential categories. We, we knew that. And again, that's somewhat old news. The real, the real important part of this graph is, is towards the right end and what we're calling kind of the new water line, right? What do we mean? You know, that, that effectively we think all, all categories, predominantly all categories, there will be a few exceptions, but predominantly all categories are now going to be at a much higher kind of new standard, new baseline for growth potential in the Amazon, Walmart, kind of e-marketplace category. And so you see that out at the right, that everything's settling kind of in that 10 to 30% um, uh, area. And we're seeing that again this month. Um, So fundamentally that all categories have grown, all categories will continue to grow and we need to be prepared for it. What's really interesting and relevant to this conversation is what happens is what happens next right and so we see that q4 always being a big growth quarter is going to have the potential to grow 32 to 35 percent right that's staggering uh, amount of growth potential and and that's on average i think when you take it one level deeper that we're able to do with the data we have um, and i hope you guys can see this um, we look at it by category and looked at q3 and looked at q4 and you can see some of these really incredible opportunities um, that are in front of many of you on this, where we see our prediction of electronics at 56 to 69 percent growth for the category for the quarter. Um, you see, uh, you know, home and kitchen 18 to 25. Um, going down to the bottom there, you see clothing up 72 to 86. These are massive opportunities for for brands to take advantage of Q4. It's all come together due to the massive acceleration of consumer change, consumer behavior to moving to an e-commerce kind of centric world. 
So this whole conversation today is to help you prepare for what we see as, you know, not just incredible growth and opportunity, but a lot of complexity that's hitting all at the same time. Yeah, Andrew, I think those are great points. And I think what backs up these predictions and makes them ex exceedingly more credible is what we saw through Amazon summer sales. Um, just for, you know, clothing, shoes, and jewelry, we saw a 31% growth from, you know, this from the same week last year. So again, to your point, you know, right in the COVID, March, April timeframe, there were significant declines over what we were seeing, people were buying essential products, they weren't necessarily buying discretionary products. But as, you know, things started to stabilize, as, you know, um, you know, sellers and brands realize how to sort of navigate through it, and then really with all the additional traffic, exposure, promotions that um, was, was really backed by the summer sale on Amazon, 31% year-over-year growth really underlines exactly what you were just articulating from a broader perspective in all of the other categories. I mean, what does this really mean? It just means that, again, Q4 is going to be really big, and this is indicative of what we should expect to come, and we need to prepare ourselves for these incredible growth within Amazon, specifically the e-marketplaces and, and, and e-commerce. Um, this next slide, I think it's just really cool. Um, I mean, essentially what this is saying is that, you know, People are shopping online. They, uh, uh, people that weren't shopping online before are now very apt to. You know, Andrew kind of referenced earlier 90% growth in, in, you know, grocery and CPG. Again, you know, that was one of the industries that, or one of the, the categories that had the lowest level of penetration at 2.9% e-commerce. And, you know, it exploded overnight because it had to. It was an essential item. People needed to get food and groceries and things like that. Um, and even after, you know, um, the quote unquote, you know, hoarding mentality was, was behind us, it's still thriving from an e-commerce perspective. And you're going to see this a, a, a lot going forward. Um, you know, people hey, Brian, really. Okay. Yeah. No, I was going to say, oh, I think I it's, just, it's just, it's, go ahead. No, go. To, to everyone on the call, um, I, I just think it's uh, this, this, this chart here that Brian has up um, is really interesting when you think about it from your own perspectives of what it is that you can push or tout or uh, focus on for your own products and categories, given the fact that I think our initial instinct was that, you know, it would be much more around um, uh, the, the, the comfort level of shopping from home was going to be the, the real winner here. But seeing how quality, speed, price all kind of trump um, some of that, I think is just a really interesting insight. Yeah, that's a great point. Um, again, and then all of these events that we're talking about are really going to be converging uh, to impact you for. Um, Amazon Prime Day, while not officially announced and everything that we've been reading, looks like it's going to be um, the last week of September, first week of October. Essentially what that means is it's going to pull Q4 sales up a little bit. So instead of being a six to seven week holiday, it's really going to be a 12 week buying cycle on um on, on e-commerce specifically walmart is really amping up their their um you know e-commerce e e e they are just teaming up with shopify so now um they'll be able to do to be uh, fulfilling from both perspectives walmart is now rolling out walmart plus to compete with amazon prime uh, there's other factors converging such as the growing boycott of facebook and advertising just yesterday i read that disney is joining that that, that boycott um, and again, there are things that could help potentially ensure that, 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 that we're limiting counterfeits on Amazon, such as the seller name and address. And then two other, other things worth mentioning, you know, we, we may argue we're not out of the first wave of COVID-19, but if there's a second wave and if states continue to, to, to roll back and stores become shut down, people will become that much more reliant on e-commerce similar to what we saw in the March of April, April, April timeframe. So that, you know, 19 to 25%, you know, uh, in, in fact, could be significantly larger if that's where people are spending their money. And then the last point that I think is worth bringing up is, you know, if there is a second round of, of, of a stimulus that comes out, um, it really can provide people with discretionary funds or money to continue to buy products specifically going for Q4. Um, and again, you know, we're e-commerce strategists, we're not political strategists, but I would likely assume that if there is a uh, second, you know, stimulus, you know, wave that comes out, it will likely be in that September, October timeframe, closer to the election, 
closer to keep the, uh, the, the economy as stabilized as, as, as possible. And that is going to do nothing but potentially help everybody here as well. Andrew, anything else you want to add there? Nope, nope. Let's, uh, let's get to some, some things these guys can take away. So really everything we've talked about so far is just to, to reset and, and to put some data behind the expectations here, um, the potential here. As we said, there's there's definitely 30% plus growth potential uh, across categories, and so we we kind of ask that question. You know, we're 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 just entering Q3, and we believe it's in, it's imperative that every one of you be preparing, planning, um, projecting, and getting ready for the holiday season right now. Um, and so, obviously, that's the focus of our conversation um, as we move. Uh, ahead to um, the things we just want to touch on in the next, you know, 20 minutes or so. Um, we're going to talk all around this retail reinvention um, and and give you some additional insights into kind of how that's going to impact you. Um, really focus on how Amazon and Walmart have become far more than just a selling platform, but much more across the entire spectrum um, and and consumer journey. And then we'll dive into some specific strategies and tips. Um, across uh, pricing and supply and advertising. Um, so that's kind of the, the plan for the next 20 odd minutes. Awesome. So let's dive right in. Retail reinvention. I mean, this is really important. I mean, there are going to be some major changes to the retail community, both from the brick and mortar perspective, but larger shopping malls, what we're seeing in commercial real estate across the board. They were reported that over 500,000 um, retail stores were temporarily shut down in you know, March and April, and while the majority of them have reopened, there are some that are never going to reopen, and there are some that are going to use it as, as an opportunity to sort of, you know, scale back. Um, you, know, for, uh, you know, shopping malls as we know them today may not look the same going forward. I mean, let's just be real, realistic. People are social. They want to go out. They want to go back into stores. But there's going to be limitations, and I think there's going to be different ways that, you know, the shopping malls are going to have anchor stores. You know, you might see you know, more than Walmarts and supermarkets anchoring as opposed to some of the, you know, large department stores. There's going to be some bankruptcies out there. There have already been, you know, uh, reported JCPenney's, Neva Marcus, Lord & Taylor, large department stores that are using this as an opportunity to sort of uh, reinvent or rewrite or, you know, aren't a able to make it going forward. And then you have other, you know, you know, major stores like Models and Pure One and Taylor, GNC, across the board, across category. This is taking a major impact on retail as we know it, and it's being forced to sort of reinvent themselves. Um, Shopify reported that in April, uh, year over year, month over month, um, Shopify lead store creations increased by 34%, which really means that there's been that much more of a, a transition to um, to to, to e-commerce. E and more, more so than that, you're going to see mergers and acquisitions, right? We've already seen Uber acquire Postmates. There's been rumors of Amazon acquiring JC Penney, um, which could provide them with a way into you know um, you know traditional retail in addition to Whole Foods. You know, there's rumors of, 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 of Facebook, you know, opening up their own marketplace. So I, it, you're, you're really going to see folks try to pivot, figure out how to engage and figure out how to sort of move this forward as the overall retail um, environment shifts a little bit. And then more so than that, you know, there are sort of the implications that the customers and, 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 and consumers are going to have to, you know, face. If going into the physical stores themselves, they're going to be required to wear face masks. You know, um, there's going to be long lines to enter stores that some of them um, require, you know, distancing. So there's going to be inconveniences. And some folks may not want to engage with that. They may prefer the ease and convenience to online shopping um, as, 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 as opposed to what was in, in the past. You know, innovation is going to be crucial. We did a web webinar, you know, a few weeks ago about innovation related to um, retail and e-commerce specifically. And one of the major call-outs from that was that, after every Black Swan event, there is always an impact and there's always an investment in innovation. The brands, the manufacturers, the suppliers that were able to, are able to survive, uh, survive after Black Swan events. Um, and we can go back to the 2009 recession are the ones that are really doubling down on technology and innovation, the ones that are figuring out how to move it forward. And it's really, you know, you're going to see a little bit of an upheaval. 
Who are the winners? I think that the e-marketplaces are clear winners here, you know, Amazon, Walmart, Target specifically. And if you look at the chart on the right, we just thought that was kind of interesting Just see how Amazon stock has changed and rose just in the last three or so months. And it's continuing to rise. I think there was a, you know, the, you know, the, the new target price is about 3,800, which is you know, another 15% increase. So again, retail is going to be changing. It's going to be reinventing itself. And as manufacturers, as brands, as suppliers, it's really incumbent upon us to embrace it, understand it, and make sure that we're moving with it and leading that path. Andrew, anything else you want to add on that? No, I'll, I'll jump into this next one, though. I think that um, what, I, what I was saying earlier, and I think it's super important, um, and hopefully everyone kind of is beginning to adapt to this, is that, you know, Amazon, Walmart, e-marketplaces are becoming kind of an omni-channel uh, experience. What do we mean by that? It is no longer just a place to transact. It is definitely seen by consumers, by brands, as a destination for beginning and and uh, experiencing the entire consumer journey. Um, before the pandemic, um, our data said that two thirds of consumers began their search for a new product on Amazon. I mean, that's crazy. 66% of consumers looking for something first go to Amazon before they do anything else. That was before we had social distancing, before we had this push for uh, this massive growth in e-commerce. So you can know now that if you want to be found, if, if you have a new product, a new offer, a new version, um, the place where you can be found first and foremost is going to be on Amazon and secondarily on Walmart. And so if you're not already thinking about this as a full funnel experience, then now is the time you need to do that. Go ahead, Brian. Yeah, so I mean, I think those are some really great points. Um, again, you know, highlighting some of the reasons why you know brands should be on Amazon are you know right here. Ninety-six percent say this is where they can acquire new customers. More so than that, if you're not on Amazon, and there are some brands we talk to that strategically don't want to be on Amazon. You know, we argue you almost have to be because your consumers are looking for your product on Amazon. And more importantly, if you're not selling them, somebody else likely is, and they're not articulating your brand in the same sort of vision and strategic way that you want them to, that it's being perceived through your other verticals. And your goal, our goal, is to really be create that seamless omni-channel um, experience so consumers can purchase the product wherever they're looking for it. It's going to be harder to get people into a store to buy products now as it will be to do it online. I think that now more than ever, for all the reasons that Andrew just articulated before, Amazon, Walmart, e-marketplaces specifically is really where um, the focus for brands and manufacturers and large sellers is going to be. All right, so now some of the exciting stuff, right? The, the tips, the tricks, you know, some of the strategies to make sure that we're all prepared um, for, for the back half of the year, specifically Q4. I mentioned it earlier, Q4 is always competitive, but this holiday, it's going to be really competitive. Um, you know, you're going to see, again, if Amazon Prime Day really does happen, you know, the first week of October or so, it's really going to start the holiday buying season that much earlier. Um, so again, there are some brands and sellers we talk to that want to, you know, be very promotional. There are some that, you know, want to have personalized offers. There are different strategies for everybody. We're going to talk about supply chain. Supply chain is going to be super important, and it's going to be really important to understand how it impacts your playbook and your strategies related to a longer selling season, specifically if there is that 30 35% increase year-over-year demand that we talked about before. But realistically, the only way to ensure that you're going to be successful is to ensure that you have the best toolkit in the tech stack out there, right? You know, I would, I would argue that this is not the time to be penny-wise and dollar foolish and look at those, you know, you know really low-end SMB you know, products that will help you, you know, in the short term. This is really the time to invest in your brand, in your store, in your product line, and put yourself in the best, in the, the, the best position to be successful long term. Q3 is the time to implement and test. Q4 is the time to execute. Um, a lot of us have code for, uh, uh, you know, tech freezes. And for that reason, I would encourage everybody to make sure that they're making that tech decision as early as they possibly can to, uh, to put themselves in a good position. Again, a lot of the folks that we've been talking to um, are having, still having some supply chain issues and really want to focus on, you know, their top sellers, their top categories, their, 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 their top products. 
And I think that is a very fair uh, you know, um, option if you are having supply chain issues. Um, but again, I would encourage you, if other people are ebbing, let's flow. You know, we, let's consider going broader and deeper if you have the ability to do so. If, if, if you can get inventory in earlier, if you can diversify where you're getting your product from, we'll talk about that momentarily. This is a great opportunity to make sure that your product assortment is going to be able to be successful, even if it's something that typically wouldn't have been your best seller before. The change in competition is going to be important to understand. Um, again, we mentioned this before, it's going to be a longer selling season. So you need to make sure that we're prepared. We get our product in early. We're diversifying. And lastly, it, it, it seems that every year, you know, we, we, we talk to folks, but nobody has, has product in January. January is traditionally a large month for, for products. You know, people are, 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 are returning and, and, and purchasing new products, and also people that buy gift cards are going to be spending them. So ensure that we have ample inventory and we have ample supply and we're still advertising. We're still doing everything that we were doing in Q4 in January as well. Uh, moving on, some general tips. You know, again, there are some categories that are more restrictive than others. Toys and games, beauty um, are, are great examples. Make sure that you have all the appropriate approvals. Your products are approved. They're built ahead of time. You have the, the, the category approval to make sure you can sell your product. It's super important. Every year, there's always a handful of folks we talk to that didn't focus on this, thought that it would be easy because they were selling it before, but there are restrictions specifically on some of these uh, categories. Um, product display pages, super important. Andrew's going to talk, be talking about advertising momentarily, but if you're going to be, if you're going to be advertising, you need to make sure you're doing everything from best practice perspective from a product display page. Make sure you're articulating your product. You have six to eight images. They not only are product images, but they have lifestyle images. You have product overlays. You have videos. You have your A-plus content. You know, your keywords are embedded in meta tags on the back end you're, so you can drive discoverability. Super important that if we're pushing people to your product pages or to your brand stores, that you're going to be able to convert, and you're only going to be able to convert if you take advantage and maximize the opportunity here. It's no different than your own website. You want to make sure you have a best-in-class experience that you're not only attracting uh, the, the, uh, you know, the consumer's eyes, but you're also able to execute and convert on it. Omnichannel, super, super key. You know, again, um, it's really important to make sure that you are going to be able to diversify where possible. If you are still focused on um, you know, bricks-and-mortar retail, Make sure that you're able to, you know, um, have ample inventory, ample supply, ample advertising um, across your other key verticals as well. And then lastly, this year, more, more so than ever, I, I really do believe social media is going to be vital. Um, you know, regardless of wherever you are advertising, how, how you are, you know, uh, promoting your product, in addition to being promotional, it's really important specifically in this environment to be altruistic as well. People want to buy good products from good companies that they know are doing things that are out there. So again, I think that's just going to sound something else to keep in the back of your mind. From a buy box and from a pricing perspective, I mentioned earlier, make sure you get everything set up earlier. It's really important to have your floors and your ceilings configured. Really important to test in Q3. And I would also caution everybody, beware of price gouging. Amazon has kicked off hundreds of thousands of sellers. And, and close many listings because of perceived price gouging. There's one thing maximizing your profitability. There's another thing to, of taking advantage. And again, make sure that the technology you're utilizing is able to ensure that you're not going to be doing so. Because if it does, your, your, your buy box is going to be suppressed and then you're not going to be able to sell the product at all. Or worse than that, you will be you know, kicked off of that listing or potentially suspended from selling on Amazon um, or, or, or marketplaces. Again, we mentioned it a little bit before, really important to understand the competition. Do you own the buy box? Or do you share the buy box? How can your products fluctuate in price? Who are you competing with? Are you using a PAT or product attribute targeting on your own listings in addition to your competitors listings? Are you managing um, in stocks, not only for yourself, but com your, your, your com competition when your competition is out of stock? Can you use that to sort of increase your pricing or be more promotional? There are absolutely a ton of strategies that are, are, are specific to your goals, and this is a great opportunity to make sure that you have that playbook rewritten. Um, and then lastly, 
you know, we really hone on this, you know, truly believe in, you know, algorithms and, and machine learning. Everyone believes that price is key and price is key to win the buy box, but there are 17 factors that in, impact the buy box, not only from inventory to your seller rating. Um, so make sure that, the, that, that, that when setting your price, you, you, you understand that. It is very possible to have a slightly higher price and still win the buy box. That said, price is king, right? So you can't be significantly higher. You need to make sure that your technology understands when to ebb, when to flow, and how to maximize this opportunity for you. And then lastly, I um, want to um, hone in on some supply chain um, considerations. Again, we mentioned earlier, don't get caught without supply. This is not the year to have lean or just-in-time inventory. I would encourage everybody to have multiple sources for their product. One of the main challenges in the March time frame is that people couldn't get products out of Asia. So again, you know, have your offshore suppliers, potentially have domestic suppliers. Um, make sure that you um, are, are, are planning for larger than normal sales. We mentioned earlier, 30 to 35% year over year increases. That's a lot of potential inventory. Um, and so you just need to make sure you're, you're planning for it. Diversifying supply chain and fulfillment capabilities is super important. Uh, we encourage our brands to potentially understand the, um, having both 1P and 3P options. If Amazon, for whatever reason, does not fulfill or doesn't want to reorder, then you can kind of sell on your own 3P storefront. It gives you more diversity um, and, and, and the ability to be nimble. You could also go broader beyond what Amazon's buying from the 1P perspective. Lastly, really important, FBA, understanding um, you know, when FBA is important, and also to back that up by having your FBM listings configured. If you can't get product into Amazon, and there are reports that Amazon is going to be restricting the amount of inventory you could send in, have that backed up so you could have your FBM listing, so you could fulfill it yourself. If you don't have the capability or the resources or the technology to do that, you know, consider working with a 3PL to do so. The last thing you want to do is not have your plan in place um, for everything across the board. So FBA, FBM, 3PL, 1P, 3P. There's a lot of options to make sure that you have multi, a multiple uh, a, a structured plan. And like I mentioned before, there are reports that Amazon is going to ensure that people aren't overstocking their warehouses. It most likely is going to be based on your, your, um, your, your index account, how much you can send it. It's most likely going to be based on your previous sales. So again, if you start in, advertising now, you start beefing up all of your, your, your sales, you most likely will be able to send more in and then uh, won't, won't necessarily have an, an issue with fulfillment later on. All right. Jump back in uh, and talk a little bit about advertising. I mean, we, we've talked on many of the levers that you have available to you, obviously pricing and supply chain and, and the portfolio, all the things that you need to definitely be planning about, uh, planning for, for Q4. Um, but one of the things that um, doesn't usually get as much focus and consideration, but is probably one of the most powerful tools you're going to have available is, is advertising. Advertising is a core component to holiday success, without a doubt. But this year, more than any other year, it's going to be complicated, and it's going to be, you're going to need to be very opportunistic. Um, and so we believe this is the time in Q3 to be rethinking and reprioritizing strategies and, and budgets. Um, let me just move this ahead. So just to take a half a step back and make sure many of you probably take advantage of Amazon's advertising platform and suite, but it is a very powerful suite of, of offerings that they've built and continue to expand um, in capability. Um, all the sponsored ad types keep uh, growing in capability and obviously can be augmented with their with their Amazon DSP. But what's really important here, we've done a lot of research analysis in this area. We help many, many clients in this area. And virtually everybody sees a very strong return on their money spent um, with, as you can see with the data at the top, 83% from when we talked to over a thousand brands saw a 4X return, 47% saw a 7X return. I think what's really important is our clients um, on average have 15x return. We've actually been seeing them getting 70 plus increase in their return on ad spend when they leverage the tools and, and approach we take. With that said, regardless of whether you're using us or anybody else, this is just a critical area for everybody to be focused on. 
And so I want to take a, uh, a little bit of a look at some data that's going to kind of back this up. Um, again, we are a very data-driven company. Um, and so you can see here that when COVID hit, um, the, the impressions, the eyeballs um, hunting in the e-commerce world just skyrocketed. And so, you know, we saw that, again, that grocery category being the outlier there, um, jump up, you know, almost 200% um, in terms of impressions. But you also see many, many categories um, or, or all categories fluctuating uh, with some strong growth in some. Um, and then, obviously, you saw that jump back down in April, if you see that. And then all back up to what, again, we're dubbing as the new normal, right? You see now everything um, kind of beginning to land in this plus 10 to plus 30, 40% growth. And this is in, in impression, uh, meaning eyeballs, how many people are looking and doing searches for these different products. So again, the new normal being at a much higher level than what we had seen before. Um, and then you couple that though um, with what we would say ROAS or return on ad spend. Many of you might look at the inverse, which is ACOS. Um, and you can see this chart is far less uh, clear and far more complicated. And this is what's most important. What's most important is your return on the money spent. Right? And as you can see, we can say that actually the categories that were in high demand, um, like grocery, um, the ones that were skyrocketing, um, uh, experienced the, 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 the biggest decreases in return on spend. And those that were in the non-essential categories, um, where people weren't actually searching, obviously we're seeing actually a much better return on spend. Um, so it's a little counterintuitive to some, but obviously, and we'll talk in a minute of why, um, it just says that there's going to be a lot of fluctuations going on in terms of how to actually get your get that that four seven or in our case 15x return on that money. Um, and again, the new normal for ROAS is actually below zero, right? Where you're actually seeing it being harder to get a return given that's what's going on. And so the question is, well, why? And what do you do about that, right? And so the why, when you take a step back, is, is, is there, right? You have, on the one hand, way more shoppers, may, way more eyeballs and more searches going on, which gives us, you know, a lot more inventory to bid on. But it also, and it also drives down, in theory, drives down the cost of marketing because there's so many more eyeballs, right? So then there's more inventory. Um, but the flip side is you've got everyone now rushing in there to spend more money, right? We're here telling you that, that this is a huge opportunity. Everyone is seeing it as a huge opportunity. So now you've got more advertisers pushing more products to the e-commerce um, uh, area and Amazon and, to, and, and putting more dollars against it, which is driving up competition and driving up the cost per click. Um, all of these things together um, are basically creating a scenario where the return on your spend is a big question mark. Um, but it's all about using the right tools, the right tech, the right expertise to find the, the way to actually leverage your money for, um, to get the most out of it. Um, and so what we are advocating to our clients um, is to use Q3 as the opportunity to learn. Um, use Q3 um, to invest in um, in learning what keywords, what the competition is doing, who's out there, what products are selling, what the cost per click baseline should be, um, using Q3 to build awareness campaigns to reach new audiences so that you could use those audiences to retarget uh, against in Q4. Um, so again, Q3 gives you this huge opportunity to get a leg up in advertising um, because, again, we believe that, that advertising will be key to those who succeed. And with that, I'm going to pass it back to Brian to kind of close up and see if we can get some Q&A going. Absolutely. Great point, Andrew. And, yeah, just to sum up, um, this is going to be a very different and very big Q4, and we want to make sure everybody is positioned appropriately. Again, like Andrew mentioned, new expectations, new behaviors, with new competitors, new opportunities. You know, and this is really the time to be nimble and also to double down to make sure that you have the right technology in place. You have the right stri uh, strategies in place. You're not using an old legacy playbook that was very successful last year or in previous years because it is a very different environment out there specifically in the retail and e-commerce world. Um, the technology, as Andrew mentioned, is so very important. We need to make sure that we are testing in Q3 to execute in, in, in Q4. 
because we don't get a second chance at, at, at Q4, um, not until next year, right? So um, this is this is so so very important. And um, to that point, I think we, we we should open it up for questions. I see that there's a couple questions in here already. Someone's really asking about inventory and when they should get their Q4 product in. Um, yeah, I mean, like I was mentioning, the earlier the better. I mean, you don't want to get all of it in and start kind of having to pay potential uh, long-term storage fees should it not sell. But I would encourage you mid to late August, early September, make sure that you have a good amount of your product in. You could stagger it in potentially. Amazon may force you to stagger it in because of that. But in tandem, um, like I was mentioning, I think this year more so than ever, um, having a seller fulfilled prime option, should you not be able to get product in for whatever reason, um, you won't have a loss of potential sales. I think that there's a lot of different strategies that we're talking about this year that we never talked about in the past that are going to um, be ever so more important. There's a great, great question from Allison. Uh, we have a related question from a bill who's wondering another uh, time related question. Uh, how soon should I start advertising to get ahead of Q4 Prime Day? So I'll take that one. Um, there's there's really almost not a too soon anymore. We're already in the Q3. Um, we believe that again, as I was saying earlier, the sooner the better. Um, obviously, you don't want to to uh, invest um, over invest in Q3 at the expense of Q4. But the sooner you can get in the market to understand. Uh, the, the the baseline of what you're up against, um, the the keywords that are actually um, truly converting um, to play around and experiment a little bit with um, which with what keywords and bid combinations um, work the best, and to use this as as I said to build audiences up for retargeting, um, I would highly recommend you know the sooner the better um, in Q3. And, uh, and, and again, you know, um, just talking a little bit about what we do for the seed advisor is, is a lot of it is around, you know, um, automating and, and really looking at um, coming up with uh, le leveraging our keyword harvesting tools and technology to make sure we're finding all the best opportunities as early as possible to build those strategies for Q4. Could we spend uh, one more moment on, on the matter of timing here, at least, uh, because uh, Katie has a question about the delays that are currently existing, getting inventory to Amazon's warehouses. She's wondering, do you have any recommendations on how to circumvent that? Yeah, I'll, I'll just jump in there. Um, from everything that we've been reading and all the clients uh, that, that, that we managed to represent, delays have been minimized. I mean, if we had this conversation two months ago or even last month, there, there, there was were, uh, still a lot of uh, delays. Amazon, you know, um, brought on 175,000 additional workers to help offset this, and um, we haven't seen it as much in the last month or so. If you are still having significant or specific uh, inventory-related questions or issues, I would love to kind of chat, understand the category you're in, the product that um, that, that are you representing, to, to just just to get a better understanding of some of these um, surrounding circumstances, and then we could probably provide some suggestions or, 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 or strategic forethought on how you should um, go about your, your getting your product in a little bit more expeditiously. Super, the, uh, the questions are coming in, uh, going back to advertising. Uh, what do you think would be more worthwhile, investing money uh, for social media campaigns or using advertising money for internal Amazon advertising? Thank you, Summer, for that question. <laughs> Well, you know, it's 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 always a little bit dependent on category and um, and the maturity of the product, right? Social is a great tool in the toolkit of advertising um, to get awareness out there um, and to reach new audiences. Depending what social channel you're using, whether it's Facebook, which maybe skews a little older, or obviously some of the tools that that skew younger. So I definitely wouldn't discount social. But I do know that um, all the data points to the, the highest return, if, if again, if, if getting you know, sales and return on your money is the metric, um, it's not everyone's metric, most people's metric. But if it is, then the, the, the platform which has proven to get the highest return per dollar, um, even more than Google and Facebook, based on all our research, is, is going to be Amazon. Um, so I would definitely think about putting the Amazon strategy together first and foremost, as I said, 
you know, more than two thirds of consumers start their search there. Um, so social becomes, I think, more support channel for Amazon um, than the other way around. Uh, thank you. Um, back to product and inventory. Uh, uh, question, uh, two questions I'm going to tie them together here about um, uh, Amazon's inventory limits and other issues. Um, uh, do you recommend FBA or FBM uh, for the holiday season? Uh, and uh, how does how does one determine uh, which to go with? What's best for them? Yeah, I'll jump in. So if, if if you have the choice, I would always recommend FBA if your products are not oversized or super expensive to ship into Amazon facilities. The reason for that um, is, you know, consumers are more likely to convert if it's fulfilled by Amazon. You have the two-day prime opportunity to, uh, um, you know, ship it out. Um, also, that said, like, um, FDM this year more so than ever is a great opportunity to ensure that should you run out of inventory, you can still meet customer demand. So, um, you know, if, if you're if, if, if having the opportunity, I, I, would, I would recommend that hybrid approach this year more so than ever, but really prioritize the FDA over the FDM unless, of course, you have super large, super bulky, super oddly shaped products that just doesn't become um, – you know, profitable, you have to uh, ship it in and pay the storage fees. Well, uh, thank you. That, that That's all the time we have uh, for questions. Uh, Andrew and Brian, uh, thank you for your, your uh, insights. Uh, great presentation. Uh, and I want to also make sure I thank uh, Feedvisor uh, for, for sponsoring this webinar. Um, I want to also thank all our participants for your for your questions, your participation uh, in this webinar. I just want to remind everyone that we're going to be sending you an email with a link to the recording of the webinar. You can also find it on prospershow.com's webinar page, along with the other Can't Miss On Demand webinars that we've hosted this year. I hope you'll be able to join us for our future webinars, our next Roth Recovery webinar, Apply an Enhanced Understanding to Automated Bidding Strategies on Amazon, Advertising AI Myths and Realities. That's going to take place uh, Wednesday, July 29th at 2 p.m. Uh, Perpetua Agency's uh, Seller and Partnerships Joseph LaSelva uh, will address if your bidding logic is leaving money on the table or worse, hindering the performance of your campaigns. So that we hope that you will join us for that. I want to just uh, ask, uh, let everyone know uh, after I conclude this webinar, uh, this presentation, uh, there will be an additional slide uh, with an offering from uh, Feedvisor. Uh, so don't uh, click off yet. I uh, will conclude now uh, by uh, telling you all that uh, thank you for participating. I hope you have a prosperous day, and I hope that you will join us for the Prosper Show later this year. Thank you. So um, just to jump in here for those who are left uh, still on, um, but we wanted to let everybody know that we at Feedvisor are here to help you win Q4. Um, and uh, we'd like to uh, extend uh, to anybody who's listening and anybody who wants to inform their friends uh, who uh, maybe uh, want to take advantage that we believe that our tools and technology can truly uh, prove themselves of huge value to you. And we're offering literally a no risk uh, opportunity for those who want to engage. Um, and we ask anybody to, to reach out to us um, and we would explain more what's possible. But uh, we look forward to, uh, to, to talking to you, uh, to anybody interested uh, after the show. Great. And again, uh, Brian and Andrew, uh, thank you for, for uh, your great presentation. Uh, thank you for your, your care and concern for the well being of our uh, Prosper community. And, uh, Hope we'll see you here, and I know we're going to see you at Prosper Show later this year. Have a prosperous day, everybody. Thanks, everybody. Bye, all.